We have been writing different code that calculate VAT, insurance, total, average, grades, um, things like that. So what if you want to repeat uh, this code you're writing multiple of times? You want to repeat it 10 times, for example. You may say, I'll copy it 10 times. But what if it's 100 times, of million times? It, it will be not efficient. If you just copy the code, it just wastes your time. The programming language has something called loops, and there are different types of loops. Today we'll focus on one of those loops, something called for loops. So the programming language uses this technique, and they call it loops, and somewhere you will read uh, iteration. Iteration is basically loop when you repeat things multiple of times. Let's look at the for loop, which one of the three loops that we have, uh, or techniques of uh, looping that we have in, uh, in Java. So we'll look at the for loop and the structure of the for loop and how we can use it with a basic example. Let's look at the structure. So the for loop starts by the keyword for. For is indicating this is the start of the loop. And it has to be a lowercase. All letters are lowercase. And then you need a space. Then you have a bracket. Bracket to start the loop. Or the components. And there are three components in the loop. There is the for loop, but also there are three parts of that of that loop. We will see this part. You need to close that bracket. And inside here come the three parts I'm talking about. That will have. Remember, there's no semicolon at the end of that line. It's not like other lines we have. Very similar to the if statement you have seen before. There is no semicolon at the end of the if statement. Here, there is no semicolon at the end of the for loop. So what are those three components which I said? So there are three components of the for loop. What are those three components? The first one, as you expect, if you're looping or doing anything, you need a starting point. Where are you starting? Uh, your loop. And here comes the first part. So the first part is for the start of the loop. And here is the first part. Usually, it is int i equals 0. If you're using integer, uh, usually use i or j or k. As here, we're declaring a temporary variable. Why we call it temporary variable? Because outside this loop, that variable is not accessible. If you go after the loop and try to use i, it will not work. Because it is just temporary for that loop. So we're creating a temporary uh, variable called i of type integer, and we're giving it a starting value or initial value of zero, followed by a semicolon. This is important. You need a semicolon, not a, a comma. If you use a comma or colon or anything else, it will not work. It has to be a semicolon. So the first part, is you declare a temporary variable, usually int i or int j or int k. It depends on the data you're using. You can use float, you can use double. Uh, uh, you can see later you can use a list as well. But let's just now focus on integer values. And you give it a starting point. Your starting point can be 0, can be 1, can be anything. It depends on, on your loop. A usual starting point is 0 or 1, then followed by a semicolon. Now will come the second part. The second part is very important. Why? Because it, it determined how many times that loop will be repeated. So it is the control or the condition for the loop to continue. If that condition is met, the loop will continue. If that condition is true, the loop will continue. As soon as that condition is false, the
the loop will end. So what is our condition here? Saying here our condition i is less than 10. So while i is less than 10, the loop will continue. As soon as i becomes a 10, the loop will end. Okay? Then after that part, which the condition that control the loop, comes a semicolon. Another semicolon, yeah? Now, what do you think the third part of your loop? The third part, if you think about it, is how, how are we going to move from the first point to the second point? So our start is 0, our end is 10. How are we going to move one step? So 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. Or are we going to move two steps? Or are we going to move three steps? Here you decide the step that you need to make from first point to second point, from second point to the third point, uh, and that you need to decide about it now. A common one is incrementing by one. So you start zero, then one, then two, then three. But you can increment by anything. So to increment by one comes here, how you do it? I plus plus. I plus plus means increment I by one. If I want to increment I by, by three, then I could have said I equal I plus three. If I want to increment it by two, I could have said I equal I plus 2. If I want to increment by 5, now you know how to do it. But if you do I equal I plus 2, then your loop will start by 0, then 2, then 4, then 6, then 8. Okay, so it jumps by 2. And, and that you need to understand. So this is the structure now of the, of the for loop. Now, after that, you have those two curly braces, one open, one closed. Inside, you will put your code. Usually, if you have a good practice, if you have multiple lines, you need those curly uh, braces. If you have only one line after the for loop, you don't need the curly braces. The curly braces are for a block, block of code, which more than one line of code. Good. Now we know the structure of our for loop. We have the for keyword, open bracket, initial value of our loop, condition, and between there is a semicolon, and then a semicolon, and how we're going to increment uh, by one, just I plus plus. If it's J, it will be J plus plus. Let's look at an example now and how that example will, will run. Here is an example, which is a very simple example. We have a for loop, again, the same one that's starting by zero and moving uh, while uh, I less than 10, means 10 is not included. Yeah, i less than 10. If it needed to be included, you can say i less than or equal 10. And then we're incrementing by 1, and then we're printing the value of i. Now, when we run this code, it starts i by 0, as we said. Then it will go and check the condition. This is the condition. Is i less than 10? Yes, i is 0, and then 0 less than 10. Then it will uh, have the value of true. and means now do the loop, go inside the loop. So it will go now inside the loop. We will go to that line, and then what it will do, it will output 1, a 0, because i is 0. Now it will go back again to the end of the loop and go back to the beginning. Now it will do what? Increment i by 1. So i will become now 1. was 0. We added 1. Became 1. Check the condition. 
is i less than 10 yes one is less than 10 then it will go inside the loop what it will do now it will print on the screen the value of 2 and then it will continue so this loop will continue doing this looping and printing looping and printing 10 times from 0 to 9 10 will not be included once it completed that one it will just go to the end of the loop and go continue the program whatever in that program if this is the only one it will end the program if you have more code it will continue with the code so the for loop is good for repeating things certain number of times for example I have a record of student there are 20 there I can use the for loop because there are fixed number 20 and I can increment by one I can do the 20 but there are other loops which we will discuss there it, they depend on on a condition so they continue the loop until that condition is false then the end ends again the for loop can be used for a situation like that but it's not straightforward the, the right one for that one you use while or do while which we will discuss in another uh, video now you know how the for loop works you can come back now to your previous code and take them and put them inside the loop and run your program you will see you can produce the same thing so you want to calculate um, the VAT of so many items you can just keep entering the items and it calculate calculate it will do it for you 10 times or something like like that and then you can maybe add the total you can there are a number of uh, nice examples in, in the lab manual please go and do those uh, examples thank you for listening